Greetings to all my fellow watch enthusiasts on YouTube and Facebook and wherever else this video is being seen and shared. It's Celine Driver once again uh, bringing to you another, uh, well, it won't be an unboxing, but it will be a review of a uh, watch that I don't own. Um, this watch uh, came to me via the Random Rob channel. Uh, what happened recently was a uh, few of uh, a few of the YouTubers that are not Random Rob uh, decided to form a little, I guess you could call subgroup within the Random Rob Discord group, um, and uh, decided to tour some watches around us that are watches that are being developed or are have just been developed by micro brand uh, folks uh, such as this watch uh, this watch here uh, which is a and I hope I'm pronouncing it right Demoro or Dumoro I'm gonna go with Dumoro <clears throat> uh, this is a um, an American based company uh, Dumoro watch USA uh, they are located in Huntington Beach, California. Uh, I will leave a link in the description uh, to their recently completed Kickstarter program for this watch. And uh, if I can find it, I will leave a link to their website as well. Uh, if you want to check out this watch for yourself. Uh, this is the Demoro DM01. Uh, this was a uh, watch that uh, was successfully funded on Kickstarter as of, I believe, March 10th, 2021. Um, this is a prototype. This is not the production watch. I will uh, go over what the differences uh, are claimed to be between this watch and the actual production watch in a little bit. Um, this came to me via uh, a fellow um, uh, Random Rob Discord um, member uh, named Casper. And uh, shout out to Casper. Thank you for providing this watch to me to uh, play with uh, for a bit before it goes on to another YouTuber um, and uh, gets uh, a review there as well. Um, I do have some material from uh, Demoro uh, about the watch. I'm going to refer to uh, uh, fairly often. Um, the the founder of Demoro is a um, is a gentleman named Carlo. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. It's spelled A I E L L O, a yellow. I'm sorry, Carlo, if you're watching this and I uh, butchered that, but uh, I'll just say Carlo. Uh, an architect, designer, and watch collector, um, and he lives in Southern Cal. Um, and uh, he says that while he's been an architect in architecture for 20 years, he has always had a watch passion and decided uh, in 2020 to start a uh, watch uh, collect. Uh, a company with a couple of friends of his and uh, then uh, Demoro was uh, was born um, it's uh, a sports watch um, it looks very uh, the only watch that I, I have any experience that this is analogous looking to is of all things the uh, Patek Philippe Nautilus um, I've seen Nautilus models with this uh, dial style, with the um, with the uh, uh, the I don't know, not a honeycomb exactly. I'm not sure what you call the um, uh, the the watch face. Uh, there's a, there's a name for it. I uh, uh, it's a raised pattern, you know, cushion style, you know little squares in a, in a grid pattern, you know. And I've seen Patek Philippe, the Nautilus, uh, look like that before. And it has a, the, the, vaguely the Nautilus shape, so that's, that's what this looks like. 
it is a uh, a, 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 a 70s aesthetic. Uh, he cites in the material that um, this is an iconic do design uh, that was um, uh, penned famously by Gerard Genta. Um, and uh, that's what uh, we come up with here. It is powered by a Miyota 9039 uh, movement. Uh, it is automatic. It is um, hand wind. And if you can unscrew the bloody thing, um, which is difficult. I'm going to get to that in a minute. It is a hackable movement, as you can see. It does come out quite a bit for a for a uh, crown that only has two positions, neutral uh, position for winding, as you can see, and second position for setting the time. So that that's that's out pretty far in the neutral position, um, and it does not really like to uh, unscrew one. Screwing it back in is pretty easy, but unscrewing it owing to the shape of the crown, and as I said, I will get to that in a minute, it doesn't really facilitate uh, ease of use. Um, there are going to be four colors in this, and it is a sunburst uh, pattern, as you can see. There's the silver, as we see here. There is also going to be black, blue, and green. Uh, it is a 100-meter water-resistant uh, watch. There's only going to be about 100 of these in the uh, Kickstarter campaign, which I said was successfully funded. Um, the, and he says in the literature that he gave, the objective with this watch was not to make a profit on this first offering, but to uh, launch the brand um, and be discovered out there, his words, and uh, then go on from there. Uh, you know, laudable uh, goal, certainly. Uh, let's see. Uh, measurements. Let's see. It is a uh, 38 point, um, and the measurements are from uh, DeMauro themselves. It is a 38.6 millimeter diameter with a lug to lug of uh, 46.7. It's a thin watch, 9.75 millimeter. Uh, the fixed bracelet, well, not fixed per se, but, uh, you know, th this is not something you're going to throw a strap on because of the, the nature of the, the design. Uh, it is, uh, what, they say 22.72 millimeter here, and it tapers all the way to 16 millimeter in the middle. Uh, the bracelet is a solid bracelet. It is fixed by split friction pins that look suspiciously like screws, but they are actually split pins. Uh, 100 meter water resistance, as I said, uh, 42 hour power reserve. Uh, watch is fully assembled in California. Uh, it is a butterfly clasp. The joint is where you have the um, the signature there. That's the split joint. And I got to say, not the easiest. I mean, you can't get a fingernail under this. So you have to kind of, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've gone to the method of just bending it away from the uh, the uh, milled out clasp like that and just pulling at it until it finally gives up and uh, you know, stainless steel all around um, give you a wrist shot I didn't size this thing and there's a reason for that which I'll get to in a minute um, close it up It's it fits fairly close just the way it came to me on my 7 and a quarter inch wrist and if I hold it tight you can see that uh, you know with that a rather large almost 47 millimeter uh, span from lug to lug even though the watch is kind of small uh, it fits okay you know it, it, it fits my wrist but you know other people might have problems with it um, it's not uh, now let's see he says it's important to mention that the prototype is not a finished product 
The prototypes were CNC machined and we did not use manufacturing molds. Uh, the end product will be about 30% better with sharper corners, better finishes. And he also outlined um, on another page, uh, let's see, he said, uh, among other things, the design of the uh, applied superluminova will be the same for the minute and the hour hands, which it is not evidently in, in the prototype. Uh, the polished bevel next to the crown will not be interrupted by the crown. The crown will be perfectly centered in the middle of the case. Uh, the class will be engineered better for a smoother mechanism. Uh, the crown size is going to be increased from 5.5 millimeter to 6 millimeter, which will be a good thing. And you can see it is definitely not centered uh, up and down in the case. And the horizontal slit, which you see here, will be centered to the middle of the case. Okay, well, that's all good stuff. Uh, and if the people at uh, DeMauro are watching this video, and they may or may not, um, uh, it's not a bad effort. I mean, it really isn't a bad watch. At three, $395 on the Kickstarter, you know, it's decent value for money. Um, they did, did they mention the crystal, what it's made of? Um, looking real quick, hang on a minute. Sapphire crystal. Okay, so it's a sapphire crystal. That's good. And I, I'm, you know, I'm willing to forgive a few things in the fact that this is a prototype and they're going to make improvements to the production watch. Um, for one thing, the square crown. No, bad idea. It is really hard to get a hold of. The corners are a little on the sharp side. Uh, it feels very uncomfortable to wind. It's very uncomfortable to screw in and screw out because it has kind of sharp edges. Um, and it, it, it just, it doesn't look good, quite honestly. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fine effort to be, to try and be different, but you're sacrificing ergonomics and usability for the sake of being different. Uh, another thing, you got to shorten this up. That sticks out way too far in the, uh, in the hack position. And there's a lot of wobble in that. Look at all the wobble in that stem. And even in the, in the run position, look at all that wobble. That, that's got to tighten up. That's, that's bad. Um... You know, the, the watch has good heft and good weight. Um, the watch head, you know, I don't have a problem with the watch head. Miona mechanism, iron, tough. Uh, great mechanism. It's going to work great. It's going to be easy to service. Um, the bracelet fits very nice to the case. Uh, we're going to have to tighten this part up a little bit. There's a lot of wobble in there. That's got to tighten up. This should be much closer to the case. And these links need to be a lot. Look at, there's a lot of slop in this bracelet. That's not good. But can be forgiven because it does give good breathing space for the wrist. And it doesn't catch wrist hair, which you can see I got a lot of. Um, but the biggest unforgiven for me on this watch, and this is personal to me, because I have a big bugaboo about butterfly clasps. I really, really dislike them. They're hard to adjust because there's no micro adjustment. Um, and in the case of this clasp, uh, yes, you can see where the split is because you put the logo, you put your logo here, uh, you, you can't get to it. I mean, look at it, it's, it's flat. You can't dig a nail in there. I'm trying. I mean, I have a pretty good nail there. I'm trying, guys. I really am. And I'm not getting my nail in there. So you have to end up pulling the thing. And that's going to wear on the mechanism. And the, and, the, and the mechanism already feels a little sloppy. It's very loose. That, that, that takes almost no effort to pop. 
and this one takes a little more effort to pop, but this one is the one that's suffering. My advice to you guys is either get a better, um, you know, make this thing bigger and stand up a little more, or ditch this clasp in favor of a, of a standard fold-out clasp, which you can micro-adjust and, um, and, and open and close a lot easier. If this is a sports watch, make it a sports watch. I mean, this is... This, this clasp is, quite frankly, it's a disaster. It, it's not good. Uh, it's not very good looking. It doesn't work very well. And it really makes it, I mean, these are relatively small links to be sure. Um, but a micro, I'd rather have bigger links and a micro adjuster than these small links that I know I'm never gonna get quite right. And that's gonna make me wear the watch a lot less. Also, if you're going to go with split pins, which you evidently have done and you're going to go with, you have to have an arrow on the back side to show which way to push the pin out uh, when you're going to, to size it. I just didn't even want to play with it because I didn't know which way to push the pin out. And it's not my watch, so I don't want, I don't, I don't want to play with it. I really don't. Um, so... It's really a good first effort. It's not a bad watch. It doesn't feel terribly cheap. It has a good solid feel to it. It looks pretty good, although I'm not a big fan of this this shape of case. Uh, other people are, and that's good on them. I do like the the waffle style uh, dial. I think that really is a good looking dial. I love the way the light plays on the sunburst. Um, so it's a good looking watch overall. It doesn't feel cheap. Uh, it feels like a nicely made piece. Uh, if, the, if the production watches are gonna be 30% better, as they say in the literature, then this will be a very nice watch for 400 bucks. But this bracelet, I mean, it's a good looking bracelet. It's very, very period correct, very evocative of the 70s style. And I like the way it looks, but this clasp is hopeless. I, I, if it were me and you were listening to me, I, I, I say ditch it and ditch this crown. Go with a conventional round crown. You know, I realize that the, the watch is kind of square. You're going for a square crown to match a square watch. You know, no, please change that it, it's no effort to change the design of the crown it really is no effort especially since you're in the pre-production stage uh fix these things and this is a hell of a watch this is a watch i could definitely get behind and recommend but right now i'm sort of neutral on this watch i mean if you like the way this watch looks um go hit the morrow up i mean why not it you know for it's $400 uh, sports watch. It's definitely worth the money. Uh, but if you're, uh, if, you know, if, if you're leaning away from it, I'd say, you know, $400 can be spent elsewhere just as easily. So it's pers it's absolutely up to you. For me, this is kind of a neutral. It's got some pluses. It's got some minuses. I'm just being honest here. Um, and I think that's what the uh, folks at Demora would want. And I certainly know that's what my viewers will want. So that's where I'm going to end it. Kind of a, you know, yeah, kind of a 50-50 watch. But if you like the video, despite my uh, misgivings about the watch, uh, please give it a thumbs up. That does help the channel to grow. Uh, it helps with these uh, search algorithms that YouTube uses. The more thumbs up a video gets, the more likely it's going to be appear in a search. And the more thumbs up a video gets, the higher up in that search result my video will appear. Comments, questions, suggestions down below. I do read them all. I do respond to them all. However, if you're going to be one of those people that leaves links to bad places on the web, or you're going to be one of those wonderful little trolls that I seem to attract and leave garbage comments in the comments section. Um, all those things and other reasons too will get that comment deleted and get that poster blocked. 
Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome, of course. Always glad to have new viewers to my channel. The more the merrier. Uh, I have over 400 videos posted on my channel. They cover various subjects. Uh, feel free to watch as many as you want. I only ask one thing in return. Before you leave, please click that subscribe button. And when you do click the subscribe button, make sure you click that bell icon so that when I upload new content, you are alerted. And when I go live, which I do every Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time or at other times during the week when time and opportunity allow, you will be alerted to those live streams. Meanwhile, I hope everyone is uh, staying safe out there. Uh, be well, be happy, be careful. I'll see you in my next video.